Today we're going to look at one of my favourite bi-categories, the bi-category of spans in a category. You can do this in any category with pullbacks. So let E be, e be a category with pullbacks, with chosen pullbacks. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the zero cells to be the objects of the category and we're going to take the spans as the one cells in our by category. And then to compose the spans, we're going to use pullbacks, which is going to mean that we're associative only up to isomorphism. So let's see. So span E is a by category with the zero cells of the objects of E, the objects of E, the one cells from A to B, which I'm going to draw with a little line through them to remind us they're not actually morphisms in E, are spans. What's a span? Well, it's got two feet and it has another object at the top, so it's a diagram like that in E. Now, what on earth could a two cell possibly be? Well, there's only one thing it could be, as long as you think about where a two cell lives. If you have a one cell S here and a one cell S prime, two cells live in places like that. So a two cell, well, what does this mean? It means we've got a span S and we've got another span S prime. And we're going to have a morphism of spans which makes this diagram commute. So, okay, those are the zero cells, the one cells, and the two cells. Now we need some composition. The composition of one cells one cell composition. What are we going to do? We're going to take a span from A to B, and we're going to take a span from B to C, and we're going to somehow compose them to get a span from A to C. So let's see what we've got. We've got a span from A to B, and we've got a span from B to C. So what could we possibly do to make a span from A to C? Hmm, well we could take the pullback. We have a chosen pullback, and that's going to be the composite of those two spans. So now we can look at whether this is associative or not. Let's leave that, leave that definition there. Is this associative? Well, it's not associative on the node. Uh, is it associative? What we're going to look at is we're going to take three spans, S1, S2, and S3, and we can either compose them first on the left by taking that pullback, and then composing them by taking this pullback, or the other thing that we could have done is that we could have, here are my three spans again, we could have composed these two first and then taken this pullback. Now those aren't going to be the same, but because of the universal property of pullbacks, there is going to be a canonical isomorphism that mediates between them and gives us an associator. So we get an associator, uh, associative only, the answer is up to isomorphism, up to canonical isomorphism. And you should feel good about this canonical isomorphism. If it's induced by a universal property, that surely has to mean it's coherent. Uh, right, so now we have to define composition of two cells. So we've got two cell composition. We have vertical two cell composition. Now remember that means if we've got two cells like this, we've got to be able to compose them. So what does that mean? It means we've got a span S1, a span S2, and a span, rather flat little span here, S3, and morphisms like that, well, it's kind of obvious how to compose these, right? Because we just compose them as, as morphisms in E. So that's easy. What about horizontal composition? That's a little bit more exciting. Because what we've got to have is a configuration like this. We've got to have two morphisms of spans that we can compose side by side. So what does that look like? Well, here's A, here's B, and here's C. We're going to have a span here, and another span here, with a cell going between them. And we're going to have a span here, and a span here, with a cell going between them. 
And so the result of this, well, the source has to be the composite along the top. The target has to be the composite along the bottom. So what we can do, I don't know if this pink is quite going to show up, but we can take this pullback here. I wonder if that shows up. We take this pullback here. And we take this pullback here. And that induces a map going in between them, which is the horizontal composite. Well, this is all very exciting. And you may be asking yourself, why is this one of my favorite bi categories? Well, the answer is because of what happens when you take monads in it. I suppose I'm jumping ahead of myself and I haven't really checked all the axioms, but you can go home and check all the axioms. So the point, the point I really want to make is the following. It turns out that monads in this bi category are really fantastic. In span E are great. Well, let's take E to be set. Monads in span set are small categories. You may be wondering what on earth I mean by monads inside here. The point is that you can take monads inside a bicategory. You may have heard of monads that are categories together with a functor that goes from the category to itself together with a unit and a multiplication. Well, you can do that inside any other bicategory as well. It's just that when you first did it, you happened to do it in the bicategory cat. So NB, a monad in a bicategory, is given by a zero cell x, a one cell that goes from x to itself, and a pair of two cells, just as before, you've got an eta, which goes from 1 to t, and you've got a mu that goes from t squared to t, satisfying the usual monad axioms. I'm going to be really honest, which I suppose I ought to. The usual monad axioms have to be slightly modified. You have to stick in some associators here and there to make things make sense inside a y category. But basically, it's exactly the same as the usual monad axioms. So what we're going to do next time is show why a monad in this y category is precisely a small category. <laughs>